Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create large wall art for your home at a fraction of the cost. If you're anything like me, you love looking at high-end decor websites, but you often see things that you just don't want to spend the money on or can't afford. I know I often see wall art that can be five, six hundred dollars that I'd love to have in my home, but I don't want to spend the money. Well, I'm going to show you today how you can have those awesome looks without spending that money. This first project, I went shopping at one of my favorite stores when it comes to large wall art, and that is the ReStore. I get some of the best items here. And so I grabbed a piece of plywood. You guys, this sheet of plywood was only $4, and I knew it would be perfect for the project I wanted to do. First thing I did was put it next to the wall where I wanted to hang it, just to kind of get an idea of the size of the wall. It was about the size I wanted to, but whoever cut this board, it wasn't straight, so I I needed to make some cuts on it. So I went ahead and drew a straight line on both sides of my board so that I could cut it off and make sure I was starting with a nice rectangle before I even started the project. Then I just used my saw to cut both sides of my board. I wanted to create a frame for this, so I went to Lowe's and bought one by two boards, and I think for this project I needed two boards. And I'm just going to lay them out around my plywood, cut them down to size, and then I'll use my saw to cut the boards. So once I had the frame put together, the fun part could start. I grabbed some joint compound from Lowe's. I also grabbed a trowel and some scrapers. So I'm just gonna start by adding the joint compound to my board. Just getting it on the board is gonna take a little bit of time. Next, this is where you want your joint compound to have some nice texture. I went in with my scraper and just kind of moved it around, made sure I had everything covered, but just kind of got that texture that I wanted. Now you're gonna come in with your trowel, and this is in the tile section at Lowe's if you're wondering where you can pick one of these up. I just grabbed the most inexpensive one that they had. But I wanted to create just some easy formation, so I went in and added some fun lines. This is just gonna give me added texture to my piece. Let your joint compound dry overnight so that it really has a chance to kind of harden up. The next day I came in to paint and I think I would have started by painting the whole thing white, but I didn't do that. I actually came in with a brown color paint that I had and just used my roller to roll on one of the little trowel formations that I created. And once I did that, I realized, no, I should have painted the whole thing white. So then I came in with a white paint and my brush and added on the paint. Now these are just sample paints that I had on hand that I'm using for this project. You don't need anything fancy. You don't need to go out and buy a bunch of paint. Now once the white dried, I came back in with a cream color and added that as well. Now have fun with this, paint it however you want, do whatever formation you want. Like this is the fun part, so really make it your own. I wanted something really neutral for my living room. Now to go back to the border that I had created earlier, I initially thought that I wanted to stain it with special walnut, which is a color I had. Go. 
but I didn't really like the color of that. Then I came in with the color maple and used that as well. So I kind of had like a combination of stain for this, but ended up going with a lighter stain. But for the stain, I'm just going to add the stain on and wipe off the excess. Then I'm gonna take those border pieces and add it around the edges. I did walk around the edge and make sure there wasn't any joint compound along the edge that would kind of hinder me from nailing in the boards. I'm gonna be using my Brad nailer with two inch nails to put in the side pieces. Make sure everything's where I want it and then I'll nail them in place. And here's a look at how this piece turned out. Now I've seen pieces like this go upwards of $500 online. The total cost of my materials was $43. So this next wall art piece was probably my most expensive to make, but honestly was probably my favorite as well. Macrame pieces are so popular right now, you can find them on any high-end site and some of them can just go for a ton of money. I wanted to give you some options you could try to really elevate your macrame pieces. So you're gonna start with a stick or a board. We had this stick in our garage for probably a year now, but you could go outside, grab a stick, anything that you wanna use for this project will work. You just need a long stick or you could use a one by two board for this. I also grabbed something called Wool Chunky Yarn. I picked this up off of Amazon. Now it's a little pricey, I'm gonna tell you, but I probably used maybe a third of this bundle. So you could actually probably buy less of this. I didn't know how much I was going to need. And you can also get it in other colors. I went with the basic white, but I think it would be really pretty in gray or blue or another color as well. So I pulled out the yarn and figured out how long I wanted to make my macrame pieces. So remember, you're gonna be doubling this over, so you want it to be long enough, and you're just going to cut that. Can you feel the music? Let's get now once I cut one long piece, from there I took and pulled apart that one piece into three individual pieces. They're very thick pieces, so really you can use smaller portions. So one piece gave me three like strings that I could use. Now to add it to my stick, I'm just gonna do a simple loop. Now again, be really careful with this because you are gonna be pulling off extra wool, so you kinda have to be delicate with this. I repeated this process by pulling off pieces, measuring how long that I needed them, and then again pulling apart those three pieces. I just went until I felt like I had enough pieces on my stick. I also grabbed some rope clips off of Amazon. Don't worry, all of these will be linked below for you guys. And they came in four different colors. I couldn't find one that just gave me that antique gold that I was looking for. So I probably have more supplies than I needed, but honestly, you could create maybe three or four of these with the supplies that I picked up. So I'm gonna be using the antique gold ones. And these clips are really cool. They just fit over your yarn and then you just smush them together in the back and it creates a fun clip. So I'm gonna start in the center section and then as I go, I'm just gonna kind of smooth out the wool and then I'll place a clamp on it. And as I go, I'm gonna gradually create like an angle pattern.
I also decided to cut this so it was angled down with my clamps. So again, with this, you just have to be patient and trim it off, take a step back, look at it, and you know, cut more if you need to. You guys are gonna have to let me know what you think of this piece down in the comments. I think it looks so nice. I wanna tell you total for all the materials, I spent $80, but again, I could probably create at least three more of these with that $80. And I've seen these run upwards of $300 online. I wanted to let you guys know that I am actually going live on Amazon twice a week, sharing with you some of my favorite DIY supplies and how I use them. It's a really fun time and I'd love for you to come over to Amazon and join me. I'm gonna leave the link in the description box to my Amazon Lives. If you click on that, you can just hit that follow button and you can follow me over there and you'll get notified anytime I'm live so you can come join me and shop with me. So go check it out and I'd love for you guys to come join me on Amazon Live. This next project was definitely my most inexpensive that I created. So when I was at the ReStore, I always like to look in the cabinet section because there's always cool drawers or cabinet doors. And I found this set of three cabinet doors that I just thought, wow, these are like in perfect condition and wouldn't these make a great grouping of wall art? So I went ahead and grabbed the three doors. They were $2 each. So I ended up spending $6 for these three cabinet doors. They were wood. They're going to be great for my project. So my idea for this was I wanted to paint them in a formation that would make a really cool like grouping of three hanging on the wall. So I painted all three of them with the color Nomadic Desert. I'm just going to use a roller to put the paint on. You could also use a brush as well. Once that completely dries, I'm gonna take the color Fawn by Waverly, which is like a brown color, and I'm gonna mix it in with that Nomadic Desert color. Then I'm gonna take a brush and I'm going to create a wave pattern along the bottom edge there. And I'm gonna do this across all three of my boards, making sure that they all are about the same height. And then I'm going to paint the bottom half with that fawn color. Next, I'm gonna repeat the same thing by adding black to my paint, and then I'll create another wave pattern at the bottom, filling in the bottom portion with that black color. Now, you wanna make sure you cover everything really well. I only did one coat of paint, and that seemed to be enough. Once these had a chance to dry, I styled them on my dresser, and you guys, I had all this paint on hand, so my cost for this project was only $6. Whenever I put together one of these videos for you guys, there's always a project that causes me problems. And this next one was kind of that one where I kept on changing what I was doing. So I originally found this high-end rope display. It was $550. It was beautiful, really cool. I wanted to recreate something similar to this. So I started by grabbing a piece of board that I had already in my garage. It was just a thin piece of wood, no more than about a half an inch. I think it was actually a fourth of an inch. And I started by just tying a string to the end of my pencil and created a half circle. Then I pulled the string in and created another half circle.
Then I went in with my saw to cut out the circle. Now I actually created some smaller circles thinking I was gonna add those. I ended up not doing that. I ended up just using that big, I'm calling it like a rainbow, that outside half circle, cutting that piece out and I'm gonna be using the larger piece for my project. I also cut down a piece of one by two inch board that I'm gonna be using for this project. I ended up cutting two of these, but I'm only using one for the project. For the one by two inch board, I wanted it to have like a white wash finish. So I grabbed my Waverly white chalk paint, added some water to it and brushed it onto my board. And then I immediately came back in with a paper towel and wiped off the excess. So it gave me that look of a white wash appearance. I grabbed some twisted rope off of Amazon that I wanted to use for this project and love the way it turned out. It's like a really thick rope and it ended up looking really great. So with my half circle, I'm gonna start by measuring down at the bottom and then I'm gonna hot glue up around the edge and then I'm gonna cut the top portion so it's higher than my bottom portion. And I'll repeat this, adding the rope, making sure that they're nice and tight together so you don't see any of the wood coming through. Now when I got to the end, I needed maybe two more ropes and I only had one. So I ended up going back in and cutting some of my wood off so I didn't have to go and buy another whole container of the rope and then I added that last rope piece in. I wanted the ends to have a frayed appearance so I'm just going to undo the ends. Now here's where it got a little tricky too. I decided I wanted to dye the ends of them. So I thought I was gonna come in with a cream color. Well, that ended up not being the right color. So I have this tie dye kit where I have a bunch of different colors and I basically just mix water with all of my different tie dyes. So I ended up mixing, I think, brown, a tan, and a yellow together to give me kind of like a light cream color. And I'm just gonna dip the ends on either side and let that sit. Well, when I was done doing that, I really didn't like the appearance of that. So I came back in with a blue color that I had on hand, mixed it with some water, again, dipped the ends in, and really liked the way it looked, you know, after I was completely done with it. And once that has a chance to dry, I'm gonna take that same wood board and I'm gonna hot glue it to the sides. Now to hang this piece on the wall, you could always add a hanger to the back. I think it's too heavy to use command strips, so I would definitely put a hanger on the back and a nail on the wall and hang it up. So here's a look at how it turned out. In the end, I really like the way this looks. You could definitely customize this piece to go anywhere in your home. You could, you know, change out how you dyed the colors. This project was $33 and the original was around $550. I would love to know which of these projects you guys liked best. It really helps me with planning future videos. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. I post two DIYs each week and I'll talk to you guys on our next one. Bye.